how to set up the Medtronic NIM Vital machine for thyroid and parathyroid surgery. The NIM module has a large touchscreen display sitting on the cart. Under the setup tab, highlighted in yellow in the upper part of the screen, you choose thyroid. The patient interface is stored on the back of the cart and is connected to the interface cable. The patient interface is attached to the operating room table with uh, swiveled clips that can be spun 180 degrees. So don't let the orientation of some pictures being 180 degrees from the others in this video throw you off. Generally, the interface cable remains plugged in at all times, but in case it's not, it plugs from here on the patient interface to here on the console. The clips on the patient interface may be rotated so that they slide easily on the rail on the side of the operating room table. Beware that the console can easily be displaced with a little bit of movement under the drapes accidentally and then falls to the ground and pulls on the leads and it's not good. So I recommend taping it down like shown. In the sternal skin, about five to 10 centimeters from your field, each of the needle portions of these leads is placed intradermally. The needle uh, of each lead must not touch the other lead. The other end of these leads are plugged into the patient console. Uh, usually they're color coded, although the color doesn't really matter, but the green ground goes into the green slot and the red for stimulator one goes into the red slot. Now for the uh, endotracheal tube leads. Those are also plugged in blue to blue, red to red. Make sure you push these uh, leads in firmly. Now back at the screen, uh, if you haven't done so already, you choose the type of case, thyroid or parathyroid. A little redundancy here, perhaps. And then you click on that. And then this is the um, time when you get to make sure everything appears to be working. There's a check on the um, grounds and the various channels. Then you press the button in the lower right hand corner to proceed to monitoring. This takes us to the monitoring screen. You can see the potentials have a little bit of background. You can adjust the threshold that defines an event. You can adjust the volume setting and you can adjust the stimulus for how many milliamps uh, touching the probe to the tissue uh, provides. Once prepped and draped, you'll pass off the end of the lead for the nerve stimulator. This stimulator has a plug-in that looks like this. And you pass it off to the circulating nurse who goes under the drapes. And in this case, has a hard time finding a way to plug it in. And that's because this particular plug-in needs an adapter and the adapter is located on the module cord by my hand there. It's just clipped on or wired on to that cord, so you just bring that over, and there it is, and you plug it in. And the other end plugs into the patient module and two different uh, plugs. A different and simpler type of nerve stimulator has just one plug and that's shown here in the blue and it's just plugged into that uh, uh, black circle plug-in. So that was for monitoring the laryngeal nerves for thyroid and parathyroid surgery. Where the leads come built into the endotracheal tube, 
one for the right vocalis muscle and one for the left vocalis muscle. If the procedure calls for monitoring other nerves, such as branches of the facial nerve in parotid surgery, the trapezius muscle in neck dissection, or muscles of the tongue in an Inspire implant, you can use leads that look like this. Medtronic sells these in packs of two or four, depending on your needs. For parotid surgery using two leads, one will often monitor the marginal mandibular nerve by placing one paired lead in the depressor anguli oris muscle and the zygomatic branch of the facial nerve by placing a paired lead in the orbicularis oculi muscle. Note that the tip of the paired lead in this location is placed in a direction away from the globe. If the surgeon wishes to monitor additional nerves or nerve branches, then additional muscles may be used with up to four leads. Various configurations can be used, including, in this case, for a combination parotidectomy neck dissection, where orbicularis oculi, depressor anguli oris, and trapezius muscle are monitored. Depending on the case type, one can choose from amongst these presets in the setup window on the monitor. In this case, parotid is chosen, and the next screen allows the user to select between two channels or four channels. Hope this helps.